Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another Hewlett Packard. The 3437A system voltmeter. It is from about 1979. It is a half a meter deep. Yeah, I'm not kidding. It takes up the... <laughs> almost, look at that. Here's where the table ends but it's really really deep and of course because they wanted it to have a really small and nice front it is i triple e and it is oh there's a, a really really special feature about this voltmeter and it is its time trigger capabilities so what it can do is it can trigger on uh, yeah, external events or uh, uh, different things. It's if you use an external trigger input, you can sample in time what exactly is the voltage, and it is microseconds accurate in doing that. And I found a very very good video that demonstrate exactly that feature. I will put a link in my description. It is made by Greg. So please have a look at that super good video in case you want to see the time trigger feature. But of course, I need to open and inspect this fantastic unit before I power it up. Looks like my unit was stored as usual. A little bit damped place. Look at that. Here is my input as well. At the back, we got the external trigger input. And the filter here for the fan is a little bit destroyed. And of course the IEEE connector. It's also missing its feet. We are now inside. And in my little inspection round, well, there's a little thing here. I always double check the voltage selector. So see this one is 240, 220, this one, but then this one is set for 220 so this tells me it was a long time ago it was powered up due to that because it's many many years ago we had 220 so i will of course have to fix this and also the fuse holder is missing i think i got those hp ones uh stuck so i better go and fix that but there's probably a reason why this fuse is missing and that is because the main sh mains input switch here is broken and just hanging and dangling here. And I think I got exactly this type stuck. So I can replace this one. And the fun thing is from the outside, this feels completely normal. There's not a lot to see here at the bottom. We've got a little bit of uh, metal shield here. I can probably open this and have a little inspect. We can see the transformer that will be the main circuit board i see some eprom so of course this is cpu based and all that this is a classic motor with uh, i think this is a two or three phase a brushless motor a little transistor for the power supply we got the rectifier diodes mounted nicely into the side and the power transistor for the power supply is also mounted there classic um hp to do all the thermal design in a good good way and i still couldn't find any <laughs> few screw that matches and i think all these are definitely hp and this one as well and nothing seems to be fitting this type here they just don't go in none of them I mean, what the heck is this? Some odd weirdo style. It should be the right one. But I can never remember where they came from, the uh, different types. I just uh, save them from whatever kind of damaged, broken, given up equipment I can ever score. I always save these. So, yeah, why not? I think it's fun to share some... <laughs> of the tricks that I do. It's just driving me nuts. I'm not able to find the right little screw holder here for this fuse. So what I did, 
I just mounted another fuse holder here inside in parallel. So here is a fuse and that it will it will work. This is nice and safe, at least for testing. I mean, if everything blows up, if everything is not working, if I'm not able to repair this, then why would I start wasting time replacing this one? I mean, let's just test something, right? It definitely looks like this unit saw a lot of water and corrosion. You can also see it here. Here is the um, top side of the unit. We see the bottom side of the circuit board. A beautiful circuit board. We see big ICs. Yeah, quite a lot of those, by the way. And near the input, we see a little Teflon isolating thing here. Yeah, we should maybe... Oh, we got a little hinge. Hinge is here, so I can probably just open and flip this down. Yeah, let's try and do that. This is really interesting. We got this big main board and in the middle we got a special HP CPU called HPC5 and here's of course the type number 12 1812 and so on right all the rest here there will be EEPROMs full of software I guess I don't see any RAM maybe it's one of these but why would you put an name on it like that so that will be the different uh, software revisions and uh, things but i don't see any leak capacitors no blown up resistors and this is of course the cable to the ieee interface this is just done using those uh, logic chips and i suppose some yeah latches and counters and stuff like that and that will be the interface to the rest of the unit. That is the cable that goes to the front panel. We just got the really, really nice uh, multiplexed uh, seven segments and the switches. Everything is in this little cable here. And you can see we also got a little bit of drivers and latches. I hope I don't need to take this apart, but I already found, see, this one, the local switch. It's not really, it's supposed to sound like that. It's actually a real dodgy sound and the feeling is like terrible, but that is how they're supposed to be, those switches really. And in here, we got the successive approximation register, DA converter and comparator and sample. And that will be the interesting input sample amplifier and and stuff like that. I really want to open this box now and see whatever is in there. It looks like it should be possible to get in there as well. So I was able to pull this shield away and then have a look into the analog. Oh, look at that star point. Isn't that just beautiful? <laughs> oh, I love it. But I get a little bit nervous when I see this kind of dark brown mud kind of thing. I think it's quite easy to take away and it's it doesn't really smell like mud. And here we look a little bit at some corrosion this is not a good sign what is exploded or leaked in here so here we go the analog converter board and the look at the transformer the way that that was shielded the secondary winding here or some of the secondary windings goes in a shielded cable to its own little rectifier system, its own capacitors, and a little regulator here and all that. So, so this is probably the power supply for this uh, analog to digital converter. And of course we got HP custom chips. And look at the implementation of the input and sample system here with the pins that needed to be in Teflon some of the transistors in Teflon and 
I mean, it's just amazing. Yeah, this is also a... I think this is a custom chip as well, right? Oh, yeah, by the way, look at that interface we got right here. That would be a digital um, interface that is opto-isolated. Fantastic. We've got some LEDs here, probably just for showing us we got power or data communication. I am very, very impressed. When you think about this, is from 1979. Yeah, US made. Definitely tip top design. I can't wait to try and power this up. So my first idea is just to bypass this uh, switch and just to see if we get something out of this. What have we got? Yeah, see all this mud. I'm not super happy about that. See, it went all the way in here as well. Well, here's my first power off. Let's dim the light a little bit so we can hopefully see Something happens. This was, was of course, locked in power on. Let's carefully and slowly. Oh, it is using a little bit of power. And we got a little bit of blinkity blink. See, of course, reset problem. And we are running at 220 volts. Uh, the fan is not powering up correctly. So let's just turn it off and then try again. The fan is not working. So I repowered a few times and now the fan seems to be running. And we seem to have something going on here. Data ready. And I didn't touch anything at all. I think trigger is in internal by default. So let's just try and input a little bit of voltage and see if we got any reading here. I just had a really, really bad moment of a confusion. What the heck is going on here? Let me take the camera and show this. Look at this annoying BNC connector. We got three little lucky little thingies what kind of garbage is this damn it i don't have any kind of connector like that because normally we got there's supposed to be only two. Oh no so here is uh 1.234 volts and I am, of course, in the 10 volt range. I got some really, really funny uh, problems with my camera. Look at the shutter time. The more light I give it, of course, it's going to get going to shorter and shorter shutter times. So you can see here. But then, if it gets darker, it will, of course, do longer and longer and crazy funny things. But why will it blur like this? I really don't understand. There's no need for it to blur because the picture is really, really nice and beautiful and sharp. Annoying. Now I know the unit is working. Of course, I want to replace the power switch. So of course, I can easily find another switch that works. This is a very, very common type of uh, switch. So let's see if I can get it in here and see if that is easy. You are not going to believe this. This is the old one. And look at the distance between those holes. Obviously, the original one fits perfectly fine, this bracket. And the two holes and the screws and yada yada fine, right? Now, we take the bracket and the new one. And I can't put the screws in the holes because the distance between the holes is different. What the heck? I didn't know that. So now I know about why the fan isn't starting correctly. Look at that, we got, it's a three-phase motor, there's a common, and then we got three other colors. And look at that, the red wire here is missing. 
So it's brown and then red, orange, and maybe this one is black. And those wires, they go to this connector here. And the transistors we see, here we go. That will be the three transistors. This is a little push-pull, I guess. And there's probably a little oscillator and all that kind of stuff that runs the fan. So what happens if I put the red wire back there? I guess it's going to run perfectly fine and smooth. Now I know the unit is working. Of course I want to replace the power switch. So of course I can easily find another switch that works. This is a very, very common type of uh, switch. So let's see if I can get it in here and <laughs> see if that is easy. It turned out to be a little bit of a challenge to change the fuse <laughs> holder here. And... Uh, to get access to this, of course, I also needed to remove this rear piece here. And sometimes these looks quite symmetric. I always mark stuff like this so I can put it back correctly. Because we've got some different holes and maybe something is a little bit different. I don't know. But it's just sometimes it happens like that. It looks like a lot of people, they were in here before me. And this one is a little bit too wide to actually fit in here. So... It takes quite a lot of force to pull this out. But my new fuse holder fits perfectly fine in the hole. Ha ha. That is nice. Anyway, so let's try and play with the different ranges. So 1.23, I can probably go into, yeah, and that is a little bit funny. So I can go into the one volt range. It is a little bit more than just one volt so this is also good you can see it's jumping a little bit i'm of course not using a proper shielded cable and all that kind of stuff and uh, i just had to stick in two little uh, wires in here it's actually not this that is the ground but it is this piece in here that is the actual ground reference so uh, i just mounted these two to a power supply that can make exactly 1.234 and uh, I believe there is a way to average this because this got this one number of readings. So if I click this one, it is one or eight, for example. And then I think you just hit store. And then what is it doing now? I actually don't understand. It's like adding them or something like that. See, it just goes nine, nine, nine. So I'm doing something wrong. Or maybe this is not working with internal trick. I just don't seem to get it. And now I can't seem to get it back again. So number of readings. Can I put in one? Yes. And store. And then I'm back again, right? So um, I haven't yet figured out exactly how to use all those uh, different uh, features of this <laughs> unit. I must say. But I think it actually works. The only thing that's annoying is the fan is not uh, always starting. But it seems to be quite accurate. And of course, like I said, what this meter is uh, especially interesting for is its uh, trigger capabilities and storing stuff at ultra fast uh, tricks and all that kind of stuff. So please, if you are into uh, all this and want to see these uh, features explained real nice and in super good detail, please see uh, Greg's video. I was only here just to see this uh, one power up and uh, look at this beautiful, beautiful uh, bubble display. And the fun thing with the bubble display is the readout seems to be following the viewer, see, all the way to the side and the, the numbers sort of follow in a really really cool way i love them so much and uh, yeah thank you very much for watching i hope to see you soon again bye